friends, welcome to Holistic Health Made Simple, where you will find health solutions to set you free from the overwhelm of diet culture and frustration with the ever-changing health rules. We go beyond the calorie and diet dogma to equip you to be healthy through simple changes to real food, mindset, and lifestyle. Hey, I'm Jolene. I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner, wife, furry guardian, and non-bendy yogi. Like you, I spent years chasing skinny instead of health. I finally learned that I needed to take a holistic approach to health and give my body what it needed to thrive. If you are ready to find a health plan that is tailored to you and your current health, solutions that are broken down into simple steps to make it easier to implement, results that are undeniable like more energy, improved mood, better sleep, and fat loss, this is the podcast for you. Pop in those headphones, take a deep breath, and let's get healthy. Have you ever started dietary changes, exercise changes, and then shortly thereafter you fall, you falter, and you go back to all your old habits? Some of that is because you have not gotten your brain in the game. Your brain is not fully on board with what you want to do. You see, your brain's the most essential tool you have to achieve these health goals. Yeah, you said, I'm determined, I'm going to do this, but... You're doing too much and you're looking at it as a diet per se. So without your brain on board for the long term, it's the easiest way that you're going to fall off track because you're looking at everything in short terms or you're doing too much and your brain gets overwhelmed. So how exactly do we get our brains to help us along the way to stay, especially when things get hard? The most important and the first thing we always look at is mindset. Not only are we going to discuss a briefly today, we are going to have several episodes on this down the road as well because this is something we always have to refer back to, we always have to work on, and we always have to adjust. You see, your attitude, which is your mindset, determines your results. Not only that, your attitude determines almost everything you do. So you need to keep your mind as the owner of your health. And when I say attitude, we need to start reframing the way we look at these changes. It's not that I can no longer eat that. It is I choose to no longer eat that because it does not serve my body. I choose to eat things that keep me healthy, that make me feel good and give me energy. Making those little Tiny switches in the way that we look at things will help our attitude stay on board. It's overwhelming. It is hard to do. And we need to make sure that our brain is on board. The next step in getting your brain on the game, especially when you're first starting, is finding your why. Think of a why that is meaningful and important to you and that will sustain you for the long haul. I always tell people, It should be beyond losing so many pounds. Losing X amount of pounds, what do you do when you hit that thing and you need to stay healthy? You need to stay in these lifestyle changes. It's not strong enough to get you through the long term. Yes, losing weight is a short-term goal. I'm not saying that you can't have that as part of your why. But you need something bigger, like being healthy to live an active life. Being healthy enough to be able to play or chase your children, grandchildren, like I said in the previous episode, hike up mountains, travel. Being healthy to do all the things you desire. Find something that will inspire you to do the constant work towards being healthy and make sure it's actually for you and not for a loved one. That is the biggest thing. When you do this for someone else, it is so easy to get frustrated, aggravated, annoyed, and just fall off the wagon. So find a really good why that is beyond weight loss, that you can revisit when you're struggling. That's right. I am doing this to be mobile and not be dependent on somebody. Or I want to see my grandchildren grow up and walk down the aisle, so I need to be healthy. Whatever that is to you, whatever that meaning is to you, find it, write it down, and keep it handy and revisit it. There will be times where you're going to rework that and make it something else, and that's perfectly fine, but have a really strong why. 
the next step of getting your brain in the game is making a plan. So part of getting your mind in the right place is to actually make a plan. And it's a plan that keeps you on track. Look at your life, your tendencies. Figure out if making small changes slowly or jumping all in is better for you. Each one of us will be different. I do find that you can jump all in, but you start having to um, do things, other things slowly and build upon them. But only you know you and what's going to work for you. If the overwhelm of doing all the changes at once is too much for you, don't do it. Um, I always said that I jumped all in at the beginning, but I jumped all in nutritionally. I didn't jump all in with everything else. So there's a lot of lifestyle changes to make, and some of them are easy and some of them hard. So maybe do more of the easy ones at first and then sprinkle in the hard ones as you go. So um, choosing which way you're going to go and taking ownership of that process you will have success. You're going to get your mind in the right place that you are in full control of these changes. This is your choice to make these changes and it's something you want to do deep down. So um, that's why we want to choose what we're doing. We want to make a game plan. Know that these plans will be constantly changing, but you're going to make a game plan that this month we're doing this, next month we're doing this, and then keep on making your plans. The plans also make it easier for you not to stray because your mind goes oh no today we were doing this we're doing this it's no big deal we're not going to make a change and deviate that so you need to be the one controlling all of the shots with the information you're learning along the way the next step is forming habits this helps get your brain on board but it also helps alleviate it from deviating kind of so when you form habits you um, can do it in lots of ways, but you want to start with a habit that you want to do. Let's say it's drinking more water so that you carry a water bottle around with you at all times so that the water's right there. And then it becomes a habit to sip on the water throughout the day because it's next to you. If your goal is to have and drink more water and you don't have any water around you, you're not going to build that habit. So you have to plan and start by following this habit you want to do. Every time we repeat something, it becomes routine. Like I said, the minute you start carrying water around after a couple weeks, that water, you will always be filling that bottle and having it with you, so you will always be drinking the water. So we wanna reinforce those habits so that they become a routine, so that they become habitual and we don't even think about them. That helps your brain stay on board because it doesn't have to think about it anymore. So when motivation lacks, because there's times where you're not motivated, it's the habits that keep us in the right direction. So if every time you go to a restaurant, you order a meal in a certain way, make it a habit, build on it. Like the water. Let's say every morning you brush your teeth, you grab a glass of water, you drink water, um, whatever that is. And there's a, a book that I highly recommend to everyone. It's called Atomic Habits. It teaches you about habit stacking. So let's say that you have a guilty pleasure of listening to um, podcasts that aren't educational or whatever it is. Maybe it's just podcasts in general, um, but it's a guilty pleasure, but you don't have a lot of time for it. Well, you want to also start walking a little bit more to listen to your podcast. You need to go on the walk. Stuff like that is how you stack habits and build upon them so that they have a, a, a reward for what your habit you're doing and building them up. So I highly suggest checking out that book, Atomic Habits, and learn how to build these habits. You know, if you, like everyone says, if you want to exercise every morning, have your shoes out, have your water ready, have all your stuff ready because it makes the habit easy. And then eventually it just becomes habitual before you go to bed. You prepare all your stuff to go to the gym or on your walk, whatever it is, and it's right there. It's not something you think about anymore. It's just a habit you do, like brushing your teeth. You get up, you brush your teeth. Or if you're like me, you get up, you eat, then you brush your teeth. It's up to you how you do that, but you, you figure out your habits, but you just want to make it routine so that your brain doesn't have to think about it. That's the best thing about habits is there's just something we do without thinking and it's less on the brain to make those choices. 
So the last step we're going to talk about today is living the journey. Being an active participant in your journey will keep you accountable. So all actions start with a thought. So you're going to pay attention to your thoughts surrounding all these changes. Yes, they're going to be hard. Some of them you may not like, but how can you reframe that into, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. These are great for me. I'm actually enjoying this. So start switching those thoughts around. And then when other negative thoughts creep in, own them. I'm not saying that, you know, you have to say, oh, well, this is great and I'm not negative. Own the negative thoughts and then spin it to a positive way. I may not like walking, but I feel so good afterwards. That's a spin on a positive thought. Um, Or I may not love giving up my nightly ice cream, but I sleep so much better without it. Or my stomach's not gurgling anymore. Whatever it is. And I'm not saying you have to give up ice cream, but think of why you have this negative thought and figure out a way to just tweak it a little. Give yourself the positive vibe so that it becomes like, yeah, I may not like no longer eating Oreos, but I love the fact that my body feels so good without them. Or I love the fact that I'm eating healthier and I have more energy and better sleep and less stress and my mind's clearer. Look at all the positive that's happening from these changes that you're making and use that as motivation to keep going when you feel a little sad and down. I know we all have some um, emotional issues with food and we need to work through it, but that's how we're going to get our brain in the game and keep moving forward. I just want to say, this is probably a huge step for a lot of people, getting your brain in the game. Everybody comes at you with this diet advice that it's food and it's exercise and that's all you have to worry about. But if your brain's not on board and still thinks of it as a temporary diet or a diet, it's not going to be sustainable. We're at a point in time where we need to change how we're eating, how we're moving, so that we can live a fulfilling life as we age. What we've done to ourselves, what we did to ourselves, what we didn't do to ourselves, that's in the past. We can't fix that. We can fix going forward, eating the real food, getting your brain in the game, and getting moving. So that's my tips for today. Get your brain on board with what you're doing, and you will be successful. I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you found value in what you heard today, I would be incredibly grateful if you could help spread the word. Sharing is caring after all. Share the podcast with others that will find the information helpful. It's through your support that I can continue to grow and bring more amazing content. And if you have a spare moment, I would truly appreciate it if you could leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to me, and it also helps others discover my show. I read every review and take your suggestions to heart, so please don't hesitate to let me know what you think. Remember, you can stay connected with me by following me on Instagram or visiting the website at holistichealthmadesimple.com. I love hearing from our listeners, so feel free to reach out, share your thoughts, ideas, and even suggestions for future episodes. See you later.